Hey guys, I'm back. We are going to be doing a. I'm going to be doing something new. I'm going to be reading a book. And uh, I have a few books. So I have. Um, so first, I got the Nothing to See Here Hotel. I've got Flight from Ledron. I've got Little Batman and the Radio Radioactive Samosa. I've got Mo Lost in the Junkers, Shadow Jumper, Inside the Game, Lost, and Jack No Name. So I'm going to be reading these all to you over um, Easter or holidays and lockdown because I've been just bored, so I wanted to do this for you guys. The first thing we're going to do is there's nothing to see here hotel. So we got around 200 pages. Yep, so we got 181 pages. And yeah. That's our side. Nothing to see here, hotel. One. Not, not all old ladies and I. Let's talk about grandmas. In storybooks, grandmas or grannies or nannies are sweet and short dumplings or fun that give you extra pocket money when your mum and dad aren't looking and need to be rescued from the occasional big bad man. But this isn't a storybook. This is a real, really real life. And my grandma isn't anything like that. My granny would terrify the big bad wolf. She'll beat him to a pulp. She go she'll go from down, chewing and so slobbing and she did so. And bleach out his bones before breakfast. Oh, I should probably tell you. My granny is a troll. A mean one. Chapter 2. View. Now I've told you the truth about my granny, the rest of what I'm about to tell you won't sound so quite funky. My name is Frankie, by the way. Frankie Banks. Hello. I know you probably already thinking that I had my brain scrambled or I'm really crazy. A cobra granny. But we've only just started. Keep reading and I'll, I'll explain everything. I swear. You'll begin to understand me in no time. My granny really is helping. Stinky, big troll and not a single word on what I'm about to tell you is a lie. Go on. There's a few more pages. Ready? Here we go. About a hundred years ago, back in the olden days when people wore tall hats and everything was in black and white, my great 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 granddad, Abraham Bannister, went for a easy morning walk along the beach. Kapow! He changed everything in the history of our family. Forever. Right up the far end of the seafront, near the rock, my gramp spotted something strange, something very and very large. Strange and large. According to my dad, Gram Granddad Abraham was a collector of rare plants and animals. He used to travel the world searching for weird and exotic things. The wood he spotted on that black and white morning must have been... Must have... Must have made his curly moustache brusker than ever. Abby sported a troll girl, a trulette, doing her laundry in the open mouth of a huge girlfriend and having a good old tongue to her face. You guessed it, that troll girl was my great 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 granny, beautiful blonde, and before anyone could scream, No, wait, Abby, she's hideous! The two of them madly in, so madly in, in love and ran off 
not married in a proper slob by chop sir troll sermon sem ceremony down in the physics under Brighton High School. Don't panic the rest of us the rest of the story isn't a great and lovely doctor. I promise. Far for a hundred years of my head. Frankie Bannister, the newest member of the bunch. You can imagine our family is tree is a crazy one. It's dotted with trolls and humans and harpies, with the occasional witch and puddle nymph thrown into the mix. My uncle Stodger is a bobber. My dad Bardic is what's known as a half thing and my mum Rani is completely human. That makes me a quarter one. I suppose I know that I'm one thirty six troll. You probably wouldn't notice I wasn't fully human the first time. My hair is always happy and it hides my pointy ears most of the time. So the only thing that really gives it away is my colour on my eyes. Just like my dad and all of my other other relatives going back up the family tree to my granny. Vegetative. Mine are copper coloured like shiny peas. It's the first sign of having troll blood. Anyway, I really want to tell you all about where I live. Hun one hundred years ago, my great 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 grandparents built it. My family still lives and work there. It is called the Nothing to See Here Hotel. It's the best secret holiday destination for magical creatures in the whole of England. You weren't expecting that, were you? Poor old Grandad Abraham popped his clogs years and years before I was even born. But Granny Ragyugita is still about. Trolls live hundreds of years longer than people. My Granny calls herself the manager of the whole while she hardly ever leaves her bed. With me, mum and my dad do all the hard work. Every day we run around like human bumper trying to keep Bud's magic, uh, magic and creatures from wrecking the place. I'm going to show you what it looks like. How can the hotel be that much of a secret? It's so massive. Anyone with half a brain would spot something strange going on in seconds if they walk by. But that's where a little bit of troll magic happens, you see. The front of the hotel just looks like a normal hotel by the seaside. And that's the only part that human eyes can see. So no one suspects a thing. The rest of the hotel is enchanted by Granny Regita and is completely invisible. The only time there's a clue that a new magical hotel is standing in plain sight at the end of Brighton Theatre is when a seagull flies into one of the invisible towers. It's pretty funny. If someone was looking hard enough, they might spot a seagull coming Swooping over the tower, heading for the sea, and wallop! The poor bird stops in midair and squawks off in a whirl of feathers, looking more than few than a T-Rex in a tutu. In a tutu. But no one ever noticed all the people that come and go along the seaside are way too busy buying ice cream and splashing about to play and pay any attention surprising seagulls. That's how the hotel managed to stay secret ever since Abby and Dieter opened it all ye those years ago. We also use a couple crafty tricks to stop any human tourists from wandering in by mistake. First of all, the visible part of the hotel is always keeping shabby and old looking. The windows never get washed and the outside haven't had a lick of paint since the place was first built. There was, there was a, then, 
There's a spell on the front set to, that fills the noses of any non-magical person to stand on them with the most hated smell in the world. It's brilliant. Let's imagine that the smell of dog poo is the worst thing you could imagine. If you put one little coat on our front step, your nostrils would instantly be full of the strongest thing of it. Ha! Human. Feeling to think twice before ringing our doorbell. As it wasn't enough, Mum and Dad's final trick is to pretend to be angry guests in the hotel. They call the local newspaper on the So here's the hotel map and I'll show you now. There's the hotel map. Rant about okay, but I'll I'll do something. They call they call the local newspapers one once a week, and rant about how horrible and dirty the rooms are, or how disgusting the food is, and put rubbish reviews up online. They're just so proud of our zero star reviews that he frames them. They are all hanging above the reception desk. So, here we are on page 18. You read this swab, so by now you must believe me. You're probably thinking that to be a human kid living in an invisible hotel with magic creatures must be brilliant. And I suppose I, c I can see why things can be downright crazy around here, which is fun. But it's not all fairy wishes, sparkle clowns and stuff. Don't get me wrong, I love my weird home and being part troll is pretty great. But it's easy to forget all of that when you've been helping mum clean up after Mr. Vernon the Stink Demon has been to stay for the weekend. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. The, the really exciting stuff started on the night of a huge storm. I was climbing the 399 steps to to Granny Geeta's tower bedroom and things at the hotel were about to get interesting. Three. Granny Geeta. Visiting Granny always gave me a gloopy nervous feeling in the bottom of my belly. Granny Geeta is just plain terrifying. Even Dad gets twitchy whenever she hobbles down from her tower once in a balloon blue moon to see what's going on in the hotel when when granny's in the bad mood and she always is she can make a blood crazed tiger look like a cute little kitten 397 398 i finally got to the top and stuck to catch my breath outside rain was lashing against the windows and it was hot this High up the tower, everything creaked and groaned. I was half expecting the whole thing to topple over in the wind, so I didn't want to hang about. Just to just get it over with, I whispered to myself, then gulped and knocked on Granny's bedroom door. There was a long silence, and for a minute I thought I was in luck and Granny was already asleep. Fat chance. Come in, boy, she finally croaked with the other side. I nudged the door open with my foot and and her familiar sink of mould and rotten vegetables wafted out onto the landing. It saw enough to sting your eyes and make you sick. I swear, no matter how many times I brought Granny Gita her food and bedtime mug of p pondweed tea, I'd never get used to the disgusting pong of that wrinkly old husk 
Inside Granny's bedroom, everything was inky dark. I stood in the light of the landing and squinted my eyes, trying to spot her in the gloom. Hurry up, you useless car bunkle. I could hear her, her the sound of her slug lips smacking together. G Granny's hungry. What have you brought me? Then, just then, lightning flashed out and I caught sight of her poppy penny, penny eyes glinting in the darkness. Get on with it, you little snot. I took a step inside her bedroom and, sh and shoved towards the spot I had seen her eyes flashing seconds before. One of the perks of being the great 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 grandson of a troll is that I can usually see in the dark, just like it's daytime. It's one of the cool things about being a human kid with troll blood in your veins. But this was magic darkness filling the room. Thicker, colder and blacker than the normal kind. Granny Gita loves to wrap herself in it like a blanket. Even when it's daytime and her windows are wide open, Granny's room is like the inside of a deep cave. I can't see... Granny. I can't see Granny, I said. Can you put the lights on? No, she barked. I like it, though. Duke's home and dungeon -y. Please, Gran. No! A bent spoon from last night's dinner sailed out of the gloom and bounced off the top of my head with the painful punk. Ow! I yelled. Oh! Stop your gripping, Granny hissed, and I... And give me my grub! I'm going to drop it. I knew that would work. Magical creatures are so greedy and... The thought of missing out on food and drink terrifies him. Granny Gita grunted in the dark. She snapped. Her crusty fingers and hundreds of candles and j jam jar lanterns suddenly lit themselves. The room twinkled into view, and there she was, my enormous grizzly grandma, hunched in her bed like some slobbering, hairless buffalo. She was a monster to look at. A grain green hulk in a filthy night dress with fat scarlet toad stoles sprouting across her shoulders and head. Her eyes glinting copper as another bolt of lightning crashed outside. There you can see. That's her. You can barely see it, but that's her. Hello, Granny, I said, trying not to look too scared. Don't forget she's the size of a bear and come to your phone is less than the better bit. Boo! she yelled, reaching for the plate in my hand. Now I took another step closer and Granny's pet twistle one gulp uh, uh, uncurled at the ends of the bed and groaned at me. I hate twistle ones, and I especially hate girls. It's a football-sized ball of firsts and horns with twiggy feet sticking out of the bottom of very sharp teeth. I lost count of how many times the horrible little shrub had bitten me. Now, it was just... It just blinked its yellow eyes at me, then scampered across the blanket and snuggled under the ground. Got my twiggy feet. Again, me and before Gulp had come along, Mum and Dad tried out a few pet cats to keep Granny company, but they kept disappearing. For ages we thought she scared them off, and they would make a quick getaway across the rooftops of the hotel until, until she bleached up a high ginger furball one more. Oh. How were we supposed to know that Granny had a taste for Abby's and Coke? That's why Mum and Dad settled on a twistle womp. It's the only thing to do. Pricky to chew. Here you go, Granny, I said. I held up the plate of Pockroach Quitch and she snatched it wildly 
from my hand. I barely had the time to blink before she threw back her head and emptied the whole thing down her gullet plate and a drink. She barked as soon as she was done chewing. I handed her the pond weed tea and she did the same thing, pouring it straight into her huge mouth followed by the mug. They are lunches, she sighed. When she finished licking her lips and picking her teeth, she lowered her eyes back towards me and stared. For a minute, I wasn't sure she was going to say anything, so I waited. You never know. Maybe today would be the day she actually say thank you. Don't stand there, oogling, you little pimple, she finally said. Bugger! I didn't need telling twice. I spun around and ran for it. But I told knew that things got really interesting when I was very keen my journey with the Utah in the hell they did. And as you must surely know by know by now, I don't tell lies. Just as I reached the door, friendly God. Okay guys, I'm gonna end it there. I've been calling for twenty one minutes. So um if you did like that, uh, tell me uh, if you want if you want to print it and want to print it, but I will go and make the book request if I have a lovely evening or morning. Um, hope you're well. Like, subscribe, and comment if you want to see more. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.